What is going on guys, Pat on the shop, uh, and tonight we're going to bring you up to speed on our L31 budget build, where we're at with that, and I'm going to talk to you about what camshaft we're putting in this. Uh, it's funny because this is a camshaft you guys ask me about all the time, and I've never run one, and this one kind of fell into my lap. Let's check it out. Man, do I ever love a budget small block Chevy build, and I'm sure you do, that's why you're here. Um, but let me bring you up to speed on our L31 here. Uh, this is the most budget build we're going to do. And honestly, the way things are looking, this is definitely, definitely going to be the best horsepower to money spent engine I've ever built. So, and I'll uh, get a little bit more into that in a minute. But let me bring you up to speed on where we're at with this thing. Uh, the bottom end is basically just a very simple rebuild and refreshing. This engine ended up being in really good shape as, as, as a as I was told, it was a runner, and uh, I do believe I didn't, I didn't find anything that would make me think otherwise. Uh, the cylinder walls were in fantastic shape, less than one thousandth of an inch wear uh, or taper on the cylinder, so we end up just uh, dingle ball honing it. The block I totally uh, stripped down and uh, washed. I did this all at home, nothing at the shop, just my own home shop here. Uh, totally. Um, washed the block out, cleaned everything, checked for cracks, everything looks fantastic. It's a two bolt main, which will be just fine for the power uh, level we're looking at. The only real machining that we actually had to do was uh, the big uh, rod ends, as I uh, talked about in the first video, were quite a bit out of round. So I went ahead and uh, had those resized and added ARP uh, hardware at the same time. Um, there, a lot of guys will, will um, you know, have their own opinions on if we need the ARP uh, hardware at this uh, horsepower uh, horsepower level. Um, honestly, probably not. But I just don't feel right having rods resized with high mileage rod bolts. They are the most stress fastener in an engine. Uh, so I just feel better about putting ARP bolts if I'm going to have it resized. Uh, it's up to you if you want to spend that extra little bit on a budget build like this. But uh, I just don't want to overshadow the fact of how important it is to have the rods resized. We're going for a budget engine, but we're also trying to build a quality engine here and do a good rebuild. And having those uh, rods resized is really important because just about every Chevy engine with any mileage you pull on it, the rod ends will be out of size. And oftentimes that's what takes out these engines uh, as the rod bearings go. And I do believe it's because of how uh, out of round they get. The crankshaft journals looked really good. Uh, I did a little bit of a hand polish on those, uh, and uh, we obviously went all new uh, rings and bearings. Uh, I used a lot of stuff from Engine Tech. If you're not familiar with these guys, they uh, they're they're really good for a budget builder. Uh, but a lot of their parts are just Reebok brand names. So, for example, uh, the bearings we used in, their, in these in this engine are Engine Tech bi metal bearings, which are basically just reboxed King bearings. I'm a big fan of King bearings. Uh, so when I found that out uh, years ago, I've been running a lot of engine tech bearings in uh, my budget builds because they're just king bearings. They literally are stamped with the king logo and, and they work fantastic. I've used them in lots of uh, budget engine builds, whatever you want to call a budget engine build. And they've held up to either even uh, in uh, turbo and supercharged applications. Uh, and they, they, they just, they're what you expect from a King bearing, but you get them at a better deal on the, under the Engine Tech brand. Uh, the rings, I believe, are Hastings. Uh, they're uh, used uh, the Molly, they're Molly rings on these. They have a premium and then like a cast ring. I went to a premium ring on this. Um, their, their prices are fantastic. So if you're not for, familiar with Engine Tech, check them out. Uh, they, uh, their customer service is really good and their prices are really good. So the, the big goal with this build was to reuse as many of the stock components as possible. So we obviously we reused the stock pistons and we cleaned those up. If you watch the prior video of this, you, I'll show you a product that works really well with cleaning pistons and parts at home. Uh, it works fantastic. So we used the stock pistons, stock rods, just resize, stock crankshaft, just a quick little polish on that. Um, the oil pump is brand new. The stock one looked pretty good, but I decided to go with a new one because I had it already. It's just a high volume melling pump uh, with a new pickup, three quarter inch pickup. Um, the oil pan, we're going to go new because the old one I probably could have fixed up, but it was a little dented just from being moved around. Uh, so I went with a new 
$40 oil, uh, oil pan. It's going to look really nice with a freshly painted block. You can see the with the gallery up, um, or sorry, the frost freeze plugs, depends on what you want to call them, it, in the black block. It just looks really nice. So I figured a nice fresh oil pan uh, might look really good. The pan rails and everything, uh, reuse the factory ones. Um, the, we put a new timing set in. It did have a new timing set if you watched the previous video, but I went to a roller, a single roller uh, timing set on this thing. Uh, I will be talking about the dampener and all that in, an, in another video coming up. Um, the deck the deck surfaces are really good. I just did a light sanding on them and checked them for squareness. So the deck surfaces are really good. Um, so really, things are really turning out very well with this uh, with this build and we're not having to spend a ton of money um, we're going to be putting a steel timing cover on on this thing uh, and I'll probably make a video about how you do that with the Vortec engines because they normally have a plastic timing cover um, so basically we just have a bottom end stock rebuild kind of thing uh, but let's talk about the camshaft and how that came to be there's a few camshafts I get asked about a lot uh, and that's where this kind of leads into this story on how this came to be um, I was buying parts for another Vortec engine uh, YouTube engine that you guys are going to see soon um, and the guy had a camshaft it was a he, he said it was out of like a crate motor or something he's like oh if you're here I was there buying some other stuff so he's like hey do you want to take a look at this camshaft for a small block Chevy and he said it was a hydraulic roller. So right away I was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's see what you got. Uh, and he, he's like, it's out of this crate motor. I don't know what it is. The numbers mean nothing. If you can figure it out, um, give, me, give me 40 bucks for it and, you're, and you can have it. And I was like, sure, I took a look. He pulls it out. Right away I knew it was a GM camshaft. I could just tell by the look of it. Uh, they're like the billet core GM camshafts. So I was like, oh, okay. I, for, I was hoping it was an like a stock L31 camshaft or something uh, and right away looking at it I knew it wasn't um, and the thing about GM camshafts is usually they don't put the full part number on them or really much identification they usually just put the last three digits on it so I noticed the last three digits were a 586 or there was a 586 and stamped there were some other numbers too and I'm like ah, it rings a bell I know that number so I told the guy Sure, I'll give you, uh, you know, or sorry, I think you wanted 50 bucks. I, I end up giving him 60 bucks because I only had 20s. And I said, I'll take it. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I have a feeling I can use it. Well, it turns out that camshaft is an LT4 hot cam. So I got an LT4 hot cam for 60 bucks. Uh, and what's beauty, but the beauty about that is that camshaft I get asked about all the time. Probably at least once a week I get a, co a comment, someone asking about the LT4 hot cam. I have never ran one, so I don't know. I, I, you know so I, I can give you an idea just from other cams I've run, but I've never actually ran an LT4 hot cam. And the funny thing with timing of sometimes this things fall into place is, I thought an LT4 hot cam would be decent for this engine um, to try out and it just happens to fall into my lap. It was like a week after I posted the first video that this all went down and it's just obviously meant to be. So we're going to be running an LT4 hot cam. So anyone who's wondering, building L31, so many people ask, we are going to be using an LT4 hot cam with 1.6 rocker arms, beehive springs and we're going to be running it on our Vortec uh, 350 so and we will be dynamoing it we'll be finding exactly um, how much uh, how much power you can get out with a little bit of porting on a stock bottom end uh, cammed 350 Vortec engine so it's going to be neat not something I've done before so it'll be new to me I'm curious to see what kind of power we can get but getting that camshaft for so cheap definitely solidified that this will be the for sure best bang for your buck money uh, or horsepower to money I have ever done um, obviously you know that's not realistic for everyone to get that camshaft that cheap but it just goes to show you that there are deals out there um, this guy was happy to get this cam out of his garage that was sitting there he had no idea what it was 
uh, and it just worked out really good for both of us. I had bought some other parts off him. He got it out of there and uh, just weird timing and it just worked out for me and it worked out for you guys, the viewers who keep asking me about the LT4 hot cam. I'll put the specs up uh, if you're not familiar with uh, what the LT4 hot cam is all about. Let me know what you guys think about the LT4 hot cam. It's kind of funny how it all came together. Um, you guys ask about this camshaft all the time. So I'm uh, hoping that we can satisfy some of you guys for knowing how much power it's gonna make, especially with a little bit of porting done to our Vortec heads. Uh, Cause it seems to be a, a camshaft that guys wanna run on basically uh, L31s, it's, it's a lot of the comments I get. So we will be doing like the valve spring setup for that, I'll be doing a video about that. We'll be doing the porting and what the flow numbers are for the Vortec heads, I'll be doing a video on that. Uh, and let me know what else you guys want to see or you're you know wondering about. But that's where we stand right now with our uh, L31. Basically the bottom ends together, uh, we're just uh, going to get working on the heads and get them all set up for the, the new camshaft. Uh, and get this thing uh, buttoned up so we can get it on the dyno. So let me know what you guys think, comment below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I appreciate it.